to Bucket List Homestead. So, I am finally back from my quick trip to Florida to surprise my mom for her 70th birthday, and was she surprised? It was fabulous. And But I was ha happy to get home. And I had to get home because tomorrow is our youngest's uh, 15th birthday, so I have to make a cake. And if any of you saw my one of my Christmas baking videos, I made whoopie pies, which is a dessert from Maine, where I'm originally from. And our son loves whoopie pies. He's right here off camera. <laughs> yeah, he loves whoopie pies. So I thought this year, I always make the cakes for the family. I always have. And everyone gets to pick out what they want. Um, but I found this one, and I asked him if he wanted it. And before the words were even out of my mouth, he said yes. So I am making him a whoopie pie if you can see that whoopie pie cake. So it's the first time using it. I'm just gonna zoom in there. Whoopie pie cake. So this is my first time making it. So I hope it goes okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna tell you everything you need and then we'll get going. So you're gonna need one and a half cups of butter, five eggs, a tablespoon of butter melted, a tablespoon of unsweetened cocoa powder, two cups of all-purpose flour, one and a quarter cups unsweetened cocoa powder, a quarter cup of buttermilk powder, a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking soda, two and a half cups of packed brown sugar, a tablespoon of vanilla, hold on, there's more, a half a teaspoon of instant coffee crystals, one cup of water, and the marshmallow filling is gonna be a separate recipe. Um, and the chocolate glaze is a separate recipe. So we'll just concentrate on the cake right now and then we will do the other things when the cake is cool. So the first thing I'm doing is I have a bunt pan here with the fluted pan. This is new. I've never done this before, but the recipe says to take one tablespoon of melted butter and one tablespoon of the unsweetened cocoa powder and make a paste and it's a paste and we're going to paint the inside of this. So I really hope this works because I I've never heard tell of doing this. This is new to me. <laughs> so I really hope this turns out. I don't really want to make a second cake. So we're just gonna paint. I'll just show you what that. Can you see what that's looking like in there? So that's the. Basically, we're just gonna paint this cake until we get it all done. We also have a tradition on our birthdays that everybody get anybody whoever's birthday it is they get to pick what they want for the supper. Whether that's me making something or they're allowed to get takeout or go to a restaurant. So he's still trying to decide, and I hope he makes up his mind soon. Um, I think I have an idea. <laughs> if you have an idea, okay. He. Uh, many of you know he has some dietary issues, so. It's a little bit harder for him. Typically, we end up going somewhere that we all like and getting him something different for takeout. Like we'll get, we'll go somewhere for takeout, like for fish and chips, and we'll get the fish and he gets the French fries. <laughs> all right, I almost have this done. So I'm gonna do the middle part too. It's almost too thick. It is hard to paint it. I'm going to make some kind of coating so the cake just slides out, but we will see. So those of you, if you don't know, whoopie pies is basically two pieces of chocolate cake with a marshmallow filling in between. That's the traditional. I know they have so many now. Pumpkin and vanilla and uh, red velvet and there's just so many flavors now. But we're traditionalists. We like the chocolate ones. And I typically only make whoopie pies at Christmas time. I think we got it all done. I think we're good and coated. I still have a little bit left. Let me just make sure I get the little piece there. And the family did a good job of keeping my plants alive in the greenhouse. They uh, did so well. Um, I started my flower seeds, one of my flower seeds, a couple of days before I left, and they're sprouting. And I was only gone four days, so yeah, they're sprouting, so we're doing good. All right. 
I actually have to up pot quite a few more things actually. That is for maybe Monday. So there we are. We're all coded. And I've got the inside here too, the good catch. This part here. So we're just gonna set this aside. And right now the oven is on 325 degrees. So I'm just gonna set this in the sink. Or on the counter, I guess, for now. Okay. I got a new camera <laughs> that I'm trying, so if it's a little bit jerky, I apologize, so I have a little, there we go. So, I have a separate bowl, so we're going to start our dry ingredients. So, this is the two cups of all-purpose flour. The one, one and a quarter cups of baking cocoa unsweetened, and this is um, Giraldi's, I believe it's called. Nope, nope, it's not that one. I honestly can't remember because I buy it in bulk and then I put it in the container. But it's really, really, really it makes fabulous chocolate cake. So, um, it's the kind you can get at Costco. If I can remember, I'll, I'll put it in this video underneath here. I'm trying to remember the name of it and it's just gone. Okay, so that's one and a quarter cups of cocoa and this is buttermilk powder right here. That's a quarter cup of the buttermilk powder. Baking powder. Salt and baking soda are all in this bowl. We're just going to put those in. And that's it. And we get a stir, which I forgot my spoon. Stir this up. Oh, it smells good. Oops. And I'm going to move over to Maeve, my kitchen mixer, aid mixer. I told you, I bake like I garden, I make a mess. We're just going to set this aside for a minute, and I'm going to meet you over at the kitchen aid mix. Okay, after five minutes, this is what you have. You want it's going to be different change um, in color, like really light brown, and it's really fluffy. So that's five minutes. It smells good, and it's just sugar and butter in here. Okay, now we're going to add the. How much was that again? It's on the other side. Half a teaspoon of instant coffee. We don't drink coffee, but when my mom comes, we have coffee, <laughs> and I just keep it in the freezer. So, and we're also going to add the vanilla. I always add a little bit more than it tells me to. Okay, we're going to give this a mix. kitchen. And that's half a cup of the water.
person also gets to lick the spoon in the bowl. <laughs> when you're done. Nice looking batter. So this recipe is from Midwest Living and it says Taryn Cope of Minneapolis won a blue ribbon at the Minnesota State Fair for this stunning chocolate and marshmallow cake based on whoopie pies. They call whoopie pies a cookie in this recipe because they're based on whoopie pie cookies. We don't call them cookies in Maine. <laughs> so they kind of have their own designation. They're whoopie pies. And there's some mix still at the bottom there that I gotta get up. Ooh. Okay. All right. I think that's all of it. Gotta get our bunt pan back. How is it? It is delicious. <laughs> well, if the batter tastes good, then the cake should taste good, right? I was a little worried this was going to be too much for this pan, but it's not. It's perfect. this around a little bit neater. There we have it. It's in there. So it's going to go into a, what was it, 325 I think it said? 325 for about 60 minutes or until, you know, you put the old toothpick in and it comes out clean. And fingers crossed, it comes out. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay. It's been about an hour. Just going to check and see what it looks like. Oh, my God. It's so good. Oh. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my goodness. So I'm just going to put a cake tester. Let's see how she uh, looks. Oh, nope. I'm going to put it back in for about five minutes. Okay, so that's already been in there a half hour in my oven. I don't know if I mentioned our oven stinks. <laughs> like, it's just... It's not even that old, and it's already going. So, we'll try five more minutes, and hopefully, it'll be done. Timer just went off. Let's see.
take it out, and I hope, well, it doesn't seem to be sticking, so maybe that weird chocolate paint thing works. I don't know. We'll see. So, 10 minutes in the pan, and then I'm going to take it out, and I'll show you what it looks like cooling on the rack. So, after 10 minutes, I turned it out, and I forgot to pick up the camera, so sorry. So, after 10 minutes, it was perfect, and I guess that weird chocolate paste thing worked really well, because here it is. Ta-da! Smells amazing. So we're going to let that cool quite a bit. Um, I might not even get to frost to the filling in the glaze till tomorrow because I really want this cool and we have to cut it in half. So see you back here. Okay, so it's the next day. It's actually Aiden's birthday today. And the cake is nice and cool and I'm going to get going on the filling. So, for the marshmallow filling, you need powdered sugar or icing sugar, depending on where you're from, what you call it. Um, you're going to need one, and I believe it was one and a half cups. Yeah, one and a half cups. One and a half tablespoons of vanilla. Got my homemade vanilla. Three-fourths cups of softened butter, and I just uh, mixed it on with my uh, handheld mixer here for a few seconds just to kind of whip it up a bit to make it a little bit smoother. And the secret ingredient, yeah, marshmallow flat. Okay, so we've got, I, I also sifted the powdered sugar. Uh, you don't have to do this. The recipe doesn't tell you to do it. I just find whenever I use powdered sugar, it's better if it's sifted. So in here I have the powdered sugar, and I'm going to add one seven and a half seven and a half ounce jar of marshmallow cream, which basically is this is the whole jar. This is seven and a half ounces. So we're gonna get this in here. This is the tricky part because marshmallow fluff is insanely sticky. And I actually bought this on my trip to Florida <laughs> and I'm using it already and I knew it was gonna come in handy. So it's like a spatula on one end and a little bit of a spoon on the other. Okay. Just gonna take a bit. Alright. Then I'm gonna add the butter. That was three fourths cup of unsalted butter. Actually, we'll probably add more like two. I would tend to add a little bit more vanilla than a recipe calls for. And I'm just going to use my handheld mixer and we're going to blend this all up. Oh my goodness, that is really good. Definitely doesn't need any more sugar. It is a little bit sweet, but the cake's not very sweet. Um, when we, we all tried a little bit of the batter last night and the cake itself wasn't very sweet. So, all right. Make sure I get it off from the bottom. So this is what it looks like when you're done. Beautiful fluffy frosting. Everything was organic and non-refined sugar except for fluff. So to save a little bit of time, um, full disclosure, my husband cut this in half for me because I didn't trust my judging skills for that. So it's in two pieces now. And then we're going to fill her up. Honestly, it looks like this is too much filling for this one cake, but we'll see. So in the picture, she does have it squish, squishing out of the side, so 
I guess that's what I'm going to do. Debating about whether or not I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. So it's time. There's also a chocolate glaze that goes on top. That I still have to make. You might hear the. My husband's upstairs uh, helping my son hook up all his uh, birthday gifts that he got. So that might be what you're hearing. Well, I'm pretty much going to use all of it. Okay. It does smell like a whoopie pie. <laughs> about OCD, this, this kind of cake is kind of messing with me a bit because usually when I make cakes I like them all nice and pretty, the frosting and everything, but this one's not going to happen. So we just put this back on top, it's falling apart, and there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and make the, let me just see, chocolate glaze. Chocolate glaze is just heavy cream that you warm up and you add a third cup of semi-sweet chocolate pieces melt it and then we'll pour it over it but that might so I did put the cake in the refrigerator for the afternoon um, there's a lot of butter in that frosting and our house is warm so I didn't want it like just melting everywhere and it was a good decision because it set up really good in there so now I'm ready to finally finish so I'm going to take about a quarter cup of whipping cream and get that on the stove and just start to warm up a bit and I have two ounces of semi sweet chocolate here so we're just going to get this warm, and we're going to go ahead and drop that in there. So we're just going to let this melt. And that's it. That's chocolate glaze. <laughs> just getting it to melt. Once this is softer, I probably should have broke the chocolate up a little bit. It would go quicker, but I'm on a time crunch because I'm going on and doing a live. In about a half hour, and I want to get this part all done. Oh, we're almost soft enough that I can take it off the burner. Okay, I'm just going to take it off the burner. And stir it up. Looks like. Smells good. Smells like hot chocolate. <laughs> Look at that. Smells good chocolate. for a minute. It's a little too warm and I don't want it to go everywhere but on the cake. So I'll be back just as soon as that's cool. Okay, so we had a little problem with the camera. It is a new camera. So um, I just want, um, we just lost everything I just did after I poured the glaze. So I just sprinkled, I have some Watkins, I dropped it again. <laughs> I have some Watkins sprinkles. Um, I like those because they don't use artificial colors. And I just sprinkled them on, put his candles on, and there is his. 15th birthday cake. All we got to do now is slice it up and try it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing if you have not done so yet. Really appreciate it. Until then, God bless. We'll see you in the next video.